Okay, what we are looking at here is uh, the beginnings of the uh, weathering process. I actually should say it's, it's about two stages in. This is really kind of the beginning. Um, the way that I start is I use uh, a coat of red oxide primer. Uh, and of course, kind of the neat thing about it is this deep, uh, dark red color uh, is the color that rust gets. Uh, so it makes a good uh, base color for rust. Now, what I've done previously, if you've watched my other Type 7 uh, video, is I had actually used a process called salt chipping uh, to create the effects. And it worked quite well. Um, what I will say though is, is it was a lot of work to get it chipped off, the salt uh, solidified, you had to literally chip off the paint. Now, um, what I've been playing around with is, is uh, an idea that David Merriman has for weathering the lower parts of his hull when you stipple uh, with a solution to give sort of a mottled algae look. But what I thought would be kind of cool would be to use the same method um, to be able to remove the paint for rust effects. And what it involves uh, is a top secret formulation of toothpaste. Um, what I did is uh, I just took the toothpaste and I mixed it up with a little bit of uh, brown pastel powder. Uh, and the reason that I did that initially was because I didn't want any white residue to show up um, underneath the paint and have like a, like a white edge around the rust areas. And so I thought brown would be a better idea. Um, so the way that I did this basically is, is you know, you create your uh, rust spots just by, by dabbing on uh, the, the toothpaste, you can spread it, you can streak it, you can, you can dab it, uh, and it, and it just kind of looks like this. Uh, and the neat thing about the, the toothpaste is it never dries, um, so when the paint is removed uh, from the top of it, uh, it just wipes off. It's pretty darned amazing. So. Um, what I did then, after uh, I got the uh, toothpaste on the model, is uh, I hit the model with uh, some testers, uh, dark aircraft gray, which I found to be a pretty close uh, approximation of a, of a typical U-boat color uh, on the upper deck. Um, this is all going to get washed out. I know it looks kind of monochromatic right now, but the weathering is, is usually like a seven step process. Um, like you can, you, I said, you know, you, you can kind of see how things turned out here and, and in places you can actually see where the uh, pastels uh, kind of get streaked down, which is, which is what's going to happen a little bit later on too, but I wanted to show you this other side and just how easy it is to uh, remove the paint and expose the rust. So I just got a little shop towel here um, and I'm just going to rub over where those dabs are. You can see it exposes the, the primer underneath. Um, of course, all along these uh, edges here. Um, basically, you can just wipe the whole model down um, you know, with a rag to make sure you haven't forgotten anywhere that you've got some rust spots you know, hiding there. Um, and, it, and it just kind of exposes them nice and, and easy. There's not a lot of, of force required. It's just a, a gentle scrubbing motion uh, to expose that red oxide um, base coat underneath. So what I'll be doing is I'll, I'll just go through this. I'll, I'll wipe all of this down. Uh, of course, on the, on the railings uh, on the top there. And then once that's all done, uh, as it will be uh, in a few short minutes at this rate, uh, is I am going to wash the whole thing uh, with a solution of diluted black to give it that kind of weathered, dirty, grungy look. So I'm going to finish scrubbing this down uh, and we will jump on to the next step. Okay, moving right along, uh, I have um, washed the model with some of the thinned, uh, grimy black paint. Um, the thing about that, you want to water it down to the point uh, that when it washes over the model, it just, just leaves a little bit of, of, a, of a grime uh, to it, but all of the color still comes through. So it's a little bit of trial and error, and I certainly recommend uh, using a spare piece of plastic 
uh, to test that all out. You can see I actually did a couple of washes on the inside of the hull here uh, to get the proper consistency until I got to the, uh, to the end there. Um, so I've washed all of these pieces here as well. The other thing that I wanted to make sure uh, that you do is seal the model uh, before you do the wash. Now I, I just use a simple wash of diluted black paint, um, but if you wash the model uh, directly afterwards, you're gonna wash your paint off. So I just cleared it uh, with some of this satin clear uh, paint and that seals in your work. I wouldn't be afraid to, uh, to seal at every stage so that your, your past work doesn't get undone by anything that you uh, inadvertently do a little bit later on. So the, the point that I'm at right now, I'm actually using some of these um, weathering pastels uh, with a soft bristled brush and all I'm doing is going over the panel lines here uh, just to just to barely you know highlight or I guess it'd be like a low light um, you know any panel lines kind of bring out that detail uh, and again this is very very subtle um, less is is definitely more when we're talking about um, weathering so you can see that this side uh, you know, has been started, this side has not yet been done. So I'm gonna continue my work uh, on the tower and on the detail pieces. Um, the other thing I did, I painted the deck with a, a grimy black uh, paint to get that base down because in the next step I'm gonna be installing uh, the little detail pieces in the tower. Okay, moving uh, right along here, I uh, put a little bit of satin clear down on the deck just because I didn't want it so uh, shiny and now what I'm doing uh, is I'm, I'm using some of this brown pastel powder just to add a little bit of a, of a brown sheen just to the areas that would get worn as the crewman would walk around because uh, you know to the best of my knowledge um, you know the decks were made from uh, wood and it was sealed with like a black a thick paint but what would happen over time is that that coating would get worn off and it would expose the wood uh, beneath so um, just for a little bit of visual interest uh, to break up that that uh, you know straight black look to it uh, I got a, just a hint of, of brown in there and that helps add you know a little bit of, uh, of color and interest uh, to the model all right, now we are adding uh, a little bit of rust, and this is my uh, preferred way of, of doing it. I take a little bit of uh, flat clear acrylic, uh, and then I mix it with some pastels. And uh, I'll use some browns, but I, I like the oranges because the, the streaking uh, for rust is typically that orange color. Uh, just mix it up into, into almost like a, just a little bit thinner than a toothpaste consistency. Um, and then all you do is, is you just add it to some of these areas that you applied some uh, rust to, where there's supposed to be some, some uh, uh, rust breaking through the, uh, the metal, especially where um, you know, railings and such join the, uh, the hull. And then what I do, I take a Q-tip, uh, soaked in just a little bit of, of water, uh, and you just kind of streak it downwards and you can just rub with your with your finger there in a, always in a downward direction and what that does is it creates your uh, your streaking effect so rub that uh, in and you, and you drag it down use your your finger to kind of soak up any of the uh, of the excess and what that uh, does for you is it, is it creates that, that streaking effect um, without being too, without being too obvious. And this is kind of what you end up uh, with it looking like uh, at the end. So I've, I've still got a lot uh, you know, to do in there, but you, you certainly don't want to overdo it. I don't, I don't want this to be a, you know, a, a, a rusty derelict uh, of a boat, but I want it to look, you know, somewhat realistic. But that's kind of the secret to, uh, to my rusting effect that I found works really well is, is the clear acrylic mixed with a little bit of pastel. Okay, everyone, here we have the uh, finished product. 
Um, I'm happy to say it turned out really, really well. Uh, I have uh, practical lighting set up in it. I got LED lights, uh, port starboard as well as the uh, rear uh, navigation light there. And that's run off of a, uh, a nine volt battery uh, that I just have tucked in here for now. Um, if this is going to be a static display, um, you can mount it to a board and we can put a switch in and all of that fun stuff. Uh, or if it's going to end up on an RC submarine, um, the resistors that are in there are actually set out for 12 volts, which is what most of the bolts run off of anyway, so you just got to wire it straight into the lighting system. Um, but as you can see there, I've, uh, I've got everything installed. Uh, our, our gun is finished. That's completely um, removable. I've got some interior details um, in there as well. You can see the, uh, the wooden decking, the benches, uh, we've got the, the flag, and I'm actually kind of, kind of proud of that. If you take a look at that, um, I've actually got it set up so that um, it is, um, you know, movable. Uh, posable. Not that you're, you're probably going to end up uh, doing that, but I just thought it was kind of a neat uh, touch. Uh, and that's completely waterproof as well. It's all been sealed uh, with adhesive uh, and then uh, a clear coat, so that's all set for the water if and when uh, this model ends up going there. Here's just a little bit uh, of a, of a close-up of some of the interior details there. Uh, the hatch is kind of fun. It's actually fully functional. Uh, it opens up. And uh, matches up to the, to the catch. Alright, there. Um, all of this was fabricated just from styrene uh, strips and, uh, and painted. I think things turned out really, really well. Um, this mast is removable. This mast uh, is removable as well. And there's our LED lights. And there's the aft navigation light. So there you have it. A quick, fun little project for a 30 second scale uh, OTW Type 7 German uh, U boat. The only thing missing now uh, is the hull itself. Uh, hope you enjoyed this little departure from some of my normal stuff. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you have any questions or comments, by all means, you can email me at any time at bob at rc-sub.com. And be sure to visit my website uh, for this and many other projects. That's www.nautilusdrydocks.com. Thanks for joining me. We'll catch you next time.